As everyone knows, I'm a big fan of anybody who's from Yorkshire, my neck of the woods, yes. And a couple of months ago now, maybe about six months ago, I was coming out of Westminster Tube, uh, literally opposite Big Ben, you know, on my way to Downing Street to do the usual political reporting. And a lady waiting at the corner of that particular tube station was none other than the very memorable and sadly now late Betty Boothroyd. So I wanted to share a couple of memories about the brief chat that we had on our very final meeting outside Westminster Tube. Hi, good morning, Neil Sean here. Nice to see you. I hope you're all well and fine and dandy. Whatever you're doing today, do keep safe. Let's have a wave. Can you, yes, can you see? Big wave. Got the fleece on. Still cold. Yes. Mm, I know. It's terrible, isn't it? You know, what do you mean? It's bikini weather, Neil. It's never bikini. It's never bikini weather, is it? <laughs> Gosh, we've we'll all got a little extra, a little extra timber over the winter is what I like to refer to it as, don't you? Insulation. <laughs> Back as ever to your breaking news story of the day. As I say, we've sadly lost a wonderful lady in Betty Boothroyd. And she came from Dewsbury in West Yorkshire. And as I say, I met her on a couple of occasions. I thought she was an incredible lady. Formidable isn't the word. The reason how she came to fame really was she was the very first female female speaker of the House of Commons. And I don't know if you know this, but she was also the first person to not really want to wear the wig. You know, most people have to wear the wig as the Speaker of the House of Commons, like Sir Lindsay Hoyle right now, you know. Of course, the, there are all other infamous speakers of the House of Commons. John Burko didn't do particularly well, did he? But Betty really trailblazed. And I was thinking about this, you know, they talk about female empowerment and the glass ceiling and stuff like that. Betty did it in high heels. Now, I don't if you also know that Betty, and I often believe this, and this is what we discussed about when we were chatting the last time, I think it helped because she had a theatrical background. Because from 1946 to 1952, she was a professional dancer with the famous troupe, the John Tiller Girls. And they were an incredible formation dance team that regularly, along with Betty, appeared on the London Palladium stage and up and down areas like Blackpool, Southport, Scarborough. You know, they took up and down the country. Hard graft, as she pointed out to me, but she loved being a tiller girl. And she said that really helped her in dealing with the rowdiness of the House of Commons, particularly the unruly MPs. When she stepped down, you know, she said she did miss the role because it was a coveted role. It was something groundbreaking. But I thought this was fascinating too. She said, I never felt that I'd actually broken any ceiling or any push forward. She said, it was simply something that I'd like to do, you know, wanted to do. I did. And hopefully I did it to the very best of my ability. She knew that other people obviously, you know, wanted the role. She knew also that perhaps she was never getting as much money as other individuals. But she said the bottom line was, if you want something, it's yours if you work hard enough. And I would say this about Betty, as I say, you know, when she was standing outside Westminster Tube, she looked absolutely glamorous. And this was about 8 a.m. in the morning. Full makeup, a beautiful red coat, hair beautifully coiffured, ready for the day. She was meeting some friends for breakfast in the House of Commons. And I thought, how nice that this particular lady, even at that particular age, you know, we're talking she must have been 89 at that point, just looked the part. She did, you know, she looked decades younger, really, in fact. And I thought this should be an inspiration to women around the world. If you don't know about the late Betty Boothroyd, do look her up because it's a fascinating story from literally a small market town in the heart of West Yorkshire to the literally epicentre of the world of politics, meeting kings, queens, presidents, you name it, she did it. And hopefully, let's just think, she will be remembered for all the good things that she did. And now wouldn't it be nice if someone was to make the ultimate documentary, and more importantly for Betty at least, look at that fabulous, fascinating showbiz career as a tiller girl. Betty, from everybody here on this channel, truly thank you.